Amazing Vibrations community and uh, welcome to another video. And uh, today I'm going to be introducing evolutionary astrology, a deep inspiration to uh, really get across to you what is evolutionary astrology and to maybe inspire you to feel an opportunity to actually use this in your day-to-day -day existence or to be able to see how this body of knowledge could actually um, help you understand why you are here. So evolutionary astrology firstly was uh, brought through by um, a person called Jeffrey Wolf Green, a uh, soul, if you want to put it that way. And um, he, he actually didn't uh, believe in astrology to begin with. Um, he received uh, the Pluto paradigm, the material uh, in, in a dream, and it was actually received to him and downloaded to him in Sanskrit. And uh, he then throughout his whole entire um, life had basically set out to first prove the material. So he did many, 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 many readings for a lot of people. Um, and then he wrote a book called the Pluto book, which is volume one and volume two. And I highly recommend getting those books if, uh, if you're really a serious student of evolutionary astrology. And, um, and then began basically uh, setting up some schools and teaching this paradigm to uh, the collective. And this obviously was taking place between the 19s, uh, the 19s, listen to me, um, in, in the 1990s. And he retired in 2005, I think. That was the last time he taught in a uh, school. And uh, today, evolution astrology is very much alive. Uh, and you can find it all over the, the, the internet. Um, there are two schools of thought when it comes to evolutionary astrology. Um, we have the Jeffrey Wolf Green um, uh, way of doing stuff, which is very much focused in soul desires. And we have the Stephen Forrest's um, kind of, uh, you know, manifestation of evolutionary astrology. And they both, you know, have a similar kind of approach in the sense that they were looking at the soul dynamic and trying to figure out what type of structure your soul's got from. And... Um, you know, just the, the, the flavor of, of energy uh, does differentiate because evolutionary astrology itself taught by Jeffrey Wolf Green is, is a little bit more intense in the sense that uh, there's a lot more, uh, I would say for me personally, there's a lot more heaviness to the experience. You really, really, really get intense when you work with um, Jeff's material. Um, so again, evolutionary astrology really does map the experience of you as a human being across time. That's what it does. That's what this paradigm does. It basically says, why are you here? And what are you trying to accomplish? Okay. And then it gives you a tool to say how to measure that, right? So in my little diagrams over here, evolutionary astrology in itself from the Jeffrey Wolf Green's uh, material is rooted in these, these principles, right? The first one is that we're observing the nature of self-reflected consciousness, okay? Self-reflected consciousness. And that is that when we look at our birth chart, it's reflecting back to us the nature of our own consciousness. And so that's through that process, we are then deepening our awareness of, you know, why are we here? What is, what is this process about? And really getting in touch with the depth of our soul's um, awareness here. And, um, the Pluto paradigm, which is what Jeffrey uh, had brought through, correlates to how the tree, which is this personality over here, so you would see that as the sun, moon, and ascendant, right? That's, that's when you look at astrology, you read your sun, moon, and ascendant, and you get your personality. So what evolutionary astrology says was, what about the depth? What's the more metaphysical part of this experience? What's, what's beneath the surface? And so that becomes the paradigm of Pluto, which is the soul and the nodes of the moon, which is the south and north node. And the Pluto paradigm is how does the soul in life, in lives and lives and lives come through and what type of personality does it use to basically facilitate or help those desires come through, right? So that's what we're analyzing. So when we're self-reflecting using the self-reflected consciousness, when we're observing ourselves inside of ourselves, we're getting to the depth of our essence, the core, the roots, right? And then from that place, we can understand what is the, the, the tree all about? What is this life all about? You get what I mean? Now, Pluto itself and the nature of Scorpio 
and the eighth house of the astrological chart, okay, which I'll get more into, that all correlates to metamorphosis, all right? And so that's what, you know, this material does for us. When we are reflecting self-reflected consciousness and we are connecting to the depths, we are then able to actually metamorphosize our existence, right? So the caterpillar turning into the butterfly is when we are confronting the nature of our limitations and evolving past them. And so through this material, through this paradigm, we're beginning to understand what is our evolutionary trajectory. What is the direction of our lives? Where are we going, right? What is our evolution? And that's why it's called evolutionary astrology. And that's the, the, the depth of the process is linked with the Pluto soul stuff. So it's very much about how we're evolving and getting deeply connected to that process. And then you see on the left-hand side of your, sorry, the right-hand side of your, I've got the thumbprint. And what evolutionary astrology does is says, look, there is no one size fits all. Okay, we are all unique, we are all different, we are all rooted in something that is very specific to us. So if we were to look at the nature of our astrology charts and the wheel, even though three or four of us have got, you know, Mars in Cancer, for instance, or, um, you know, we've got Venus in, in Pisces, it doesn't mean that that is the same for everybody. And that's what it, what evolution astrology does. It looks at this and says, we all come in with our own trajectory, our own direction. And that direction is reflected through the observation correlation concept, which is we're looking at our lives. We're looking at the chart and saying, how is our lives playing out? And then how is the chart reflecting that back to us? So very much rooted in once the one size does not fit all we're all unique we're all different in this process and we're here to evolve and the way that we evolve is through getting into our roots and understanding the dynamics that are associated with there and the way that we do that is is self-reflected consciousness that you can see in there in the top so this is what it is this is what it's about and it's incredibly powerful because it gives us such a beautiful tool and a compass to figure out where we're going. Now, in um, evolutionary astrology itself, and particularly again, the, the Jeffrey Wolf Green method, uh, you will notice that when you're understanding your astrology chart, we, we go through the concept of the, of the Trinity, okay, the law of three. And so because of that concept being applicable and, and, and used in, in evolutionary astrology, that's, that's the law, it says, that there are 12 signs, okay, these are the 12 astrological signs, right, Aries to Pisces, and that those 12 astrological signs have planets, okay, and each of those planets and those constellations have absolutely no separation, and the reason why is because there is this rootedness in natural law, in other words, there is no separation. The separation comes from the mind. The separation comes from our physical senses in that sense. So what happens here is, is that evolutionary astrology says there are 12 signs. There are the planets that correlate to those signs. And then we also have the astrological wheel, the, the, the wheel itself. So you can see there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And the first house, in this particular instance, each house correlates to each of those signs, okay? So, as you can see here, Mars, the planet Mars, the constellation Aries, and the first house of the astrological chart are all representation of one archetype, and that is the Aries archetype, okay? So... What that means is that when you understand the Aries archetype, when you learn about the Aries archetype, which in evolutionary astrology is how the soul actions its desires. So when we have these three symbols, Aries, uh, uh, Mars, and the first house, and we analyze that in the chart, what we get is the very specific nature of how your soul has constructed this life and how you're going to actualize those desires, right? And that is what's so beautiful about this material is that if you look at it all over here, you've got the, 
the sign of Cancer, the zodiac sign of Cancer. You've got the planets or the, the, the planet of Moon, the Moon, and you've got the fourth house of the astrological chart. And those, all those three archetypes, all those three signs themselves are, are manifesting in the same way. And that means that it is about the self-identity. So if you come back to this astrology chart here, you can see that there is a sign that's ruling the 12th, the first house. You can see that um, your Aries is ruling the 10th house of the astrological chart. And you can see that Mars is in the sixth. So when you combine that, that, and that together, you get the entire story of what's specific for you and how that soul is basically going through this life, like how the, those, those desires are being met. And that's, that's what evolutionary astrology does. And it, the reason why it does that is because there's no separation. There's a trinity. So they're all the same archetype. The sun, the Leo, and the fifth house of the astrological chart are all representing the same thing. There's no separation. So if you have the sun in the eighth house of the astrological chart, all right, you don't just have, uh, and you've got the sun in the eighth house of the astrological chart and your sun signs in, say, uh, Pisces, for instance, then you're actually going to be needing to understand sun in Scorpio and sun in Pisces to get a combination of how those are operating, right? And so it gives you an extra layer of depth that is associated with it. So it's really fascinating. All the 12 archetypes, all the same. And then what we have is the Pluto paradigm. And this is truly fascinating. When you're looking at the astrology chart, what you are trying to access is what is the soul's journey? What is the direction? Where are we going with this? So what basically happens here is we have the Trinity, right? So we have, here's the past, here's the future, and there's the present. That's the present moment right there in the center. And that's where the human body exists, right? And then the past is what has been evolving you and the future is where are you evolving to, right? So when you look at this diagram here and you see this wave, okay, what you see is again a trinity and you also see a movement in a direction, right? So evolutionary astrology says this, we all originate from the source, we all separate from the source to experience a desire and that desire then becomes the nature of our life. And when we look at Pluto in the astrology chart, we then see the nature of that desire. And that begins to express to us, where are we heading, right? And it's deeply, deeply powerful to understand this wave, right? And what Jeff's trying to talk about when he talks about these separating desires is he's saying that whenever we choose to incarnate in the physical form, we go along a path and along that path, we become to realize what these themes are. And that becomes the choice to evolve, right? We're evolving through these themes. And then at some point, when we realize what those themes are, we begin to return back to the source. Oh, this is why I incarnated, okay? Now, for us to understand this, the, the soul's desires is a very complicated thing. So we can't actually have a mental process of it. We can only have words associated with it, which is why we come up with desire or choice. Now, the ego or the self-identity is something that makes it more relatable. And this is the personality. This is what makes our lives personal. And again, when we are personally identifying with our soul's journey, we begin to see why we are here. And that becomes the nature of our evolution. So the south and north nodes in the astrology chart tells us where we've been, how we've been actualizing those ideas, those, those desires, what type of desires we have going forward, North Node, and what is the current way that we are moving from the past to the future. So the moon in your astrology chart will show you specifically how you are consistently integrating the past into the future, right? So in my case, I have the South Node in the 11th house. I have my North Node in the fifth house. And my moon sign is also in the fifth house. So for me, the way I'm consistently integrating my evolution is through self-validation, understanding my individuality and communicating that and connecting with it, right? And so by doing that, I'm naturally creating the perspective in my life or experiencing the perspective that my soul has chosen for me to evolve my personal story. 
And that's how you read the chart, and that's how you understand the karma. And that's what this is all about. It's like, what is your karma? What is your desires? You can objectify it, and then you can become aware of it and watch how the story plays out for you. And that's what evolutionary astrology does. It really, really gets you into the depths of this undercurrent that is existing for you. So the structure of the chart is you begin with Pluto and you ask the question, why? Why is the souls here? What is the soul's desires? Then you look at the south node and you say, what has the ego, what ego has the soul used in the past? So all the types of conditionings, what type of family you lived in, what type of home you existed in, what type of judgments you've had, what type of um, uh, you know, conditioning, etc. And then you look at this extra layer, and that's what's really fascinating to me about evolutionary astrology as well, is it adds an extra layer to the south node, and it says, well, what is the individual context that you as a person actually have? So um, you can have this thing where you've got the south node in, uh, say, Sagittarius, for instance. Now, the south node ruler, which you can see over there, is Jupiter, right? The, the ruler of this uh, is in Sagittarius. Jupiter is the ruler of Sag. And so therefore, you locate Jupiter in your chart. And all of a sudden, you see that there is this extra layer of information that's telling you specifically what type of karma you've cut in the past and what type of karma you are going to be working through in this lifetime. And then that illuminates and gives you a sense of groundedness around where you're going, right? And that's how you actually understand the structure of the soul from evolutionary astrology's perspective. And it's really fascinating. Um, I actually run um, astrology schools themselves. And uh, this is the kind of format that you, you have. You, I teach you the 12 archetypes completely. Um, and I also teach you about the structure of the soul, Pluto, and also how to read the nodal axis as well, so that you can actually begin to objectify your own um, astrology and how you're actually operating in this lifetime regarding your karma. So it's a deeply fascinating experience to understand. And I'm just going to quickly run back to the chart over here to explain to you that this process and these laws are all the types of consciousnesses that you apply to this astrology chart to bring the richness out of it, to bring the depth out of it. And it's really, really fascinating. So I really hope that you enjoyed that introduction to evolutionary astrology. Um, in the description below, I've given you uh, a link that will link you to some articles uh, regarding evolutionary astrology if you're interested in reading. Um, and as well, if you're participating in the schools, um, I've also got all of that on my website as well if you would like to learn astrology from me. Right, everyone, have a fantastic uh, day and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, bye-bye.